<clears throat> and it's well, like I've never done this before. I think you have to select Facebook before you start the meetings, what it looks like now. Huh. I'll check that out next time. Oh, okay. You have to say that you want that. Huh, okay. I will spend time with that before tomorrow. Um, what I want to do here is go over here and make sure I'm on the right date. Not July 9th. I want July 2nd. Because I'm preaching July 9th. Jonathan is preaching this Sunday, but he's out with the kids. We have 40 kids out at... Wow, that's at wonderful. Not for him. Not for him. Not for him. Yeah. Hello, Ross. <laughs> you speak the truth. <laughs> Is, yes, that's more than usual. Um, um, that is a little bit more. I think we got into the high 20s last year, but there's mm -hmm. probably about a third of the group is our kids and then their friends mm -hmm. and stuff. So. so that's a really good thing. Okay, well, we are into ordinary time. We're walking through the Gospel of Matthew. <clears throat> We're now towards the end of chapter 10. Um, we're going to include uh, um, verse up to verse six this Sunday, but the actual pericope, the actual is just two verses, 40 through 42. But before we read that, um, I want to remind you of where we've been so you can put this in context. Um, but before I even do that, I will open this with a prayer. Gracious and loving God, we do pray that you would give us your Holy Spirit. We give thanks for this gathering and a hunger for your word. And so let this be helpful and fruitful for us. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay. So um, we've been working through this sending of the disciples. And that last week we heard about you know, trouble's going to be come. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be risky. Um, Jonathan talked about moving from disciple to apostle because we're being sent out. Um, and look, they're going to malign the teacher. They're going to malign the disciple too. But he says, have no fear. And so we have the promise um, that he's going to be with us. And he then has to say these tough words. I didn't come to bring peace, but a sword. And a person's enemies will be those even in their own household. Um, whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Um, uh, so, and then last week, well, now we get to this week's um, gospel. So does anybody want to read 40? But we're going to have you read through verse 6 of chapter 11. So 40 through 42, and then 11, 1 through 6. Anybody want to read it? I will. Please, Carrie. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of the disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Now when Jesus had finished instructing his 12 disciples, he went on from there to teach and proclaim his message in their cities. When John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. All right. Thank you, Carrie. 
Shall we hear it in the King James? No. <laughs> That's a lot of Fs in there. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, well, let's just kind of do as we often do. What jumps out at you uh, in the first hearing or reading of this text? I'm, I have a question about the concept of reward. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, what would the disciples have thought about when Jesus said that? A one is a prophet's reward. Yes. Is a, a reward of righteousness. I mean, I could see them going, huh? You know, and today, what what is the reward? Are, are we supposed to expect a reward? A reward? Uh, that, I didn't... I wasn't taught that. <laughs> yeah, we don't do stuff for the reward, right? No. Bible does talk about rewards, though, interestingly. Um, this is the Greek word myth, mythos, reward, wages, pay. Uh, let's see here. Um, we've got uh, a recompense based on what a person has earned and thus deserves, the nature of the recompense being either positive or negative. So it can't, it, just, it might be punishment or it can mean punishment or reward. It can be whatever. And that I think is key. I think that is key because when we think of reward, yeah. we think of positive. Yeah. The Greek word, depending on the context, can be positive or negative. Mm -hmm. Now, Go back. What reward did the prophets get? A lot of them were killed. A lot of them were killed. <laughs> That's right, Harry. That's what Jesus says. What does Jerusalem do? Oh, you who kill the prophets. And so, wow, wait a minute. It says um, whoever finds his life will lose it. Uh-huh. And this kind of reward, this is a reward, I think, in, in terms of the like the prophet and the, the righteous man. So rewards coming from society or culture, not reward necessarily, in this case, coming from God. Okay, right. So then that's another great point, Doug, is, is this, we just kind of, I guess I, when I read this, typically, I would just assume this is God's reward. You know, well, the third one is the third one is, yeah, I think it's God's reward, right? The but the other two, two yeah. So, um, so if we were to try and just expand the, the, the translation here, so the one who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive what a prophet usually gets. The one who receives a righteous person because he is a righteous person will receive a righteous person's, what they typically get. What happens to the righteous people? Are, are you looking at two kingdoms? Are we looking at two kingdoms? Yeah, nice. Um, I, are there any righteous people? <laughs> is one question I have, but... But if we just go with it and say, okay, the what does the world do to the righteous? Not much. Not much, right? So, so then, and then whoever whoever gives one of these little ones even a cup of cold water because he is a disciple, truly I tell you, he will by no means lose his reward. Um so this is a section about what? Receiving the messenger. So it seems to be a promise here that if you receive the gospel, if you receive the messenger and even give them a cup of cold water, you're going to not, you know, there'll be a blessing, a reward. It's not that you earned it, not to. So how do you get the reward is the question. It's where your heart is. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And and what you do with these guys, right? I mean, do you or do you listen? And it seems like that's what's being talked about. So, Cindy, you you were perfect to take us to that word reward. And so, I guess the clarification that's hopefully helpful is it it's 
it can be good or bad, the per, what the result of that. Um, now, the other thing though with the prophets, what else did they receive? From, let's just say it's from God. Well, the prophet, how did the prophet speak? Because they had the Holy Spirit. So, so you receive a prophet, you're going to maybe receive the spirit. I don't, I don't know. It's, it's, it's ambiguous a little bit, but it kind of feels to me like, um, you know, it's almost like a comparison. If you receive a righteous person, you, you get a portion of, of their righteousness. If you receive a prophet, you get a portion of what they get, but boy, you receive one of these little ones, one of his disciples you're going to you're going to receive a blessing as well i think is where that goes is this helpful at all yeah what are who are little ones are we talking about small children you know teenagers or i think it's a disciple or a little one oh a new disciple like a brand new one um because he is a disciple so one of these little ones seems to be uh, let's see let's see where else we find that the parable of the lost sheep see that you do not despise one of these little ones for i tell you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my father who is in heaven all right let's go there real quick the parable of the lost sheep it's like a the, this, of yes and um who are the little ones here? Well, let's see. Um, That's some children there, isn't it? Yeah, is this where he's welcoming children in 18? Truly, I say to you, unless you turn and become like a child, children, you'll never enter the kingdom of God. Whoever humbles himself, whoever receives such one such child, um, whoever humbles himself like a child, is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. But whoever causes one of these little ones to believe in me to sin, it would be better for them for bad things to happen to them. Um, uh, woe to the world for temptations to sin. So I don't hear in this that it is little children. Okay, yeah. I think this is a term of humility um of followers of jesus um you know become like a child so it's it's these who are humble looked down upon by the world maybe um i think it's his followers yeah i think it's his disciples it's like we gathered the hen that gathered the chicks yeah these, these are his little ones these yeah. are his special yeah people. yeah yeah i it's think stature, but that they're yeah. Precious, precious to him. I think there's a reality going on here <clears throat> that uh, we don't necessarily get the uh, approval of other people, but at the same time, the reward that's coming to you comes into your your mind, and uh, and is a strengthening, mm -hmm. a really strong uh, vein, and that keeps you more centered on what the what the reality is as god sees it yes yeah but you're not necessarily going to feel it yeah yeah or get it you're not if you're looking for for the reality to come back and and praise you forget it <laughs> but god's praise and fills in and fills mm. and makes it possible to go forward yeah love that yeah so um so the little ones i think are his followers yeah yeah in this context and in chapter 18 but there is another spot where the little children are coming and he's and they try and prevent so it's like i think barb's term of endearment is kind of on target I, that's um now so this it's like when he fin when he had finished instructing the twelve disciples, he went on from there to teach and preach in their cities. So who's he talking to here? He says, "Whoever receives you, and this is going to be second person plural, I'm sure. Yeah, pronoun second person. Um, 
Oops, yeah, let me go over. Well, the you isn't isn't just you. It's it's you with the Holy Spirit guiding you. Would that be sure closer to it? Um, but pronoun personal second person. Yeah, so it's not it's plural. So in other words, he's talking. He's this. He's remember he's sending them out. And he's giving them all kinds of warnings. People are going to hate you. People are going to do all these things. And then he says to them, those who receive you, even if they give you a cup of cold water, they're going to have a blessing. They're going to have a reward. Now, that's a cool promise. Um, because when, when you think about um, sharing your faith, I am usually thinking about me. Like, what do I say? Uh, are they going to think I'm nuts or are they going to cut me down? Or are they going to get mad or are they going to be offended? Or are they going to, but really I just need to think about the fact that when I share this with them, if they receive it, that's going to be a huge blessing to them. Now that doesn't mean I shove it down their throat or anything like that, but it, it's like there's a there's a promise that when we engage as an apostle to go back to Jonathan's sermon last week, that that there can be not just a blessing for the apostle, but a blessing for the hearer. And this is what it said, whoever, and then look look at this. This is because he's he's talking to the evangelists here, not not to the ordained pastors preaching from the pulpit, but to all of us. That's what Jonathan said last week. How do you feel about being an apostle? Does that fit? You feel okay about that? <laughs> you probably wouldn't call yourself an apostle, but you are. You're a sent out one. That's what apostle means. So, um, I mean, it's scary, it's scary. But then we finish this with a really cool promise. I, I Hats off. To, I'm glad he gets to preach on this this Sunday, too, because, because this is without this last section the more I think about it, yikes, who would want to be sent out? You know, but but look what's look what's here. And this is the reason, you know, everybody needs to hear the word corporately and privately, right here, verse 40. Mm -hmm. Whoever receives you receives me, Jesus says. So when you share the gospel, when you tell somebody Jesus loves you more than words can say and forgives you all your sins, and they go, thank you, they're not receiving you, they're receiving Jesus. Think about that. That kind of gives me goosebumps. <laughs> That's crazy. So you see how important the preacher, not the ordained preacher, but you as a share preach has a negative connotation in our culture like you know don't preach to me you know whatever but but a teller of good news <laughs> see how important that is see the gospel is news good news that's what gospel means it's news so yes i mean remember saint francis what he said you know supposedly he said this i don't i in fact i think this has been debunked i don't know it's one of those things that a quote gets associated to somebody but he, um supposedly saint francis said share that you know uh, tell the gospel share the gospel and if necessary use words mm -hmm. you know because it's all about your actions you know yeah that's fine actions are important but it is words it's not if necessary you've got to use words <laughs> at some point you got to tell them. It's got to come into their ears. Faith comes by what? Hearing. hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So they got to hear. And if, sorry, I'm, I'm preaching now. I'm not even doing this sermon. You know, if you are the devil, if you are the devil, you, or you're the adversary of Christ, and you want to mess things up for somebody and the church, what do you want to do? You want to keep people from hearing. I can tell you this much. 
it's dame i i have i'm i'm struggling right now because i i open up youtube because i like to watch lectures and all this stuff but there's this thing in youtube it's like uh tiktok for youtube it's like shorts they call it and I can start on those shorts, YouTube shorts, because they show me how to hit the golf ball in, in you know, 15 seconds. And they show me these funny little clips and they and the, the algorithms, once when I watch something for more than like a second, they start bringing me more of that, okay? And I can, like, 45, 45 minutes went by. <laughs> and I, I've, I've wasted 45 minutes going through the YouTube shorts. This is the way TikTok works too. So, you know, now I'm not saying that's evil or the devil, but it took up 45 of my minutes. That you didn't want. That I didn't really plan to sit down and spend. But my goodness, you know, we go to church for 45 minutes. I don't think I can do it, but everybody's doing it. Everybody's spending hours on yeah, TikTok and faith. Yeah. So, this is the thing, the devils, and I really believe there's a devil, and I really believe there's an adversary who is trying to destroy the church, and there's lots of strategies that the devil has, but what, the big one is to sever people from hearing the word. But look at John 1.1. 1, 1. Mm, yeah, in the beginning. What's the word? And the word was with God. The word was God. He was with God in the beginning. So yeah. the word is, is the first thing mentioned. Yeah, yeah, there you go. So, and so look again, whoever receives you receives Jesus. So how do you receive somebody? You listen, because they're out, they're told to go tell the good news. Do you let, let them into your house to hear? If they don't, then that's their loss for sure. Um, again, I'm not saying for us to all go out right now and start you know, grabbing people on the street, you know, but, but uh, maybe we, maybe we can, maybe we should do a little of that. I don't know. But, um, but I think that that's just such a cool promise. Whoever receives you receives me and whoever receives me receives God, the father. Whew. There's, you know, in one sense, you've got the whole church, the whole ministry, everything right there in one one verse. <laughs> That's why we exist. We exist to tell people about Jesus because when they hear about Jesus, they get connected to God and have the gospel. So, all right, let's go. No. <laughs> all right. Anyway, very cool. Sorry, boy, I got excited about this text. I, I better, I'm going to tell Jonathan, sorry, that, bud. <laughs> You can preach next week. I like this one. No. <laughs> yeah, what what else though? Sorry, I did get on a little bit of a, a, a preaching thing there. Could little ones also be the lost? Mm. I mm. about that. Yeah, the ones that are just lost. And they could be adults in, in our or whatever they're going through, they just it, that that reminds me of the shepherd type of idea because I think that there's some, in congregations. I remember you said something about you know calling someone that you haven't seen for a long time. Mm. You know that could be you know a possibility. You know bringing those sheep back. When, Maybe when, we're all shepherds. Yeah, we just don't know it. Right? <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah. <laughs> When he first started telling him what to do, he said, uh, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Six. So I think in this, the context of Matthew, the little ones are the disciples that he's sending. And he's giving a promise to those who are hearing. But the disciples in this missionary sending are the lost sheep of Israel. So that's the lost or who who he's sending these little ones out to, to take care of. Yeah. But Cindy, what you got me thinking of when it, can it be the lost, the little ones? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But what we want to do is look at Matthew and Luke on the lost sheep parable. Mm -hmm. It's been a while since I think I contrasted, compared and contrasted these, but 
So if you go to Matthew 18, 10, keep your finger, you know, in chapter 10 there, of Matthew. But if you go to chapter 18, um, take care that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you in heaven, their angels continually see the face of my father in heaven. So who are the little ones here? Now, it seems like the little ones are disciples, members of the community that have been caused to stumble. They've, they've, they've gotten tripped up. That you know, the, they're, they're members of his community in Matthew, they're members of his community, but there's something gone wrong. That exactly what you said. Like, who do we call? Who do we call up? It's it's the sheep who have been a part of the community that have gotten lost, gone astray, whatever, however you want to term it. I really think, Cindy, yes, the little ones can be looked that way. And so then you get the parable of the lost sheep here. Um, okay, I've got another question now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, it, this probably no, we can't do that. But uh, we can do anything. <laughs> Why did I? Do okay, so if we wanted to know if there are people in our congregation that haven't um, come for a long time, yes, but we know them, how do we know that they're not here if there's two services? I mean, how how do we find out about those people so we can call them and talk to them or have coffee? Great question. There's two ways uh -huh. you can ask me, okay, or Jonathan, uh huh, and we can say, you know, yeah, I haven't seen them, or yeah, they were here last week, you know, yeah, yeah. or we can say, yeah, they're traveling, they're they live in the, right. you know, in the east vacation. coast. What yeah. are what's that? Vacation. Yeah, they're on vacation. Or whatever. So yeah. one, you can ask us. Okay. We welcome that. Oh, okay. send us a little email. Hey, I haven't seen such and such. Love it. Okay. I'd be like, yes. <laughs> so, or you can call Bruce. And okay. and I and I don't think this is really confidential if you if you are calling, you know, out of care. Bruce can if they fill out the friendship pad when they come, or they fill out the connect card when they watch online, we have a record of that. Mm -hmm. And we could, and Bruce can tell you they haven't been here since April of 2022. Or, so those are two ways you can do that. Now, the other way, which is fun, Denise, oh, maybe I shouldn't put her on the spot yet, but I have someone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, too late. Um, that's I'm going to be working with to kind of restart our inactive ministry calling, oh. telecare calling, like, Wow, how are you doing? You know, I haven't seen you in a while. Oh, that'd be nice. And so if you're interested in helping with that, talk to me and I'll pass your name on to the unknown person. <laughs> might be <laughs> might be be helping me to that. that up. Yeah. Me. Okay. I'll, be, I'll yeah. do that. Yeah. Because I'm kind of um, I'm I'm that that was one of the things that when I heard I said, Well, how in the heck I go to first service all the time. Yeah, how and would I know? If I say, you know. Oh, I haven't seen it for you a while. Well, I've been here all the time. Oh, <laughs> here, but here's the here's your third option. Call them up and say, you know, I go to the late. I, you may be coming, but I just haven't seen you because I come the early. Maybe you're going to the late, and then they can say, well, no, I actually haven't come, and you're good. Um, yeah. So just acknowledge that. That'd be really yeah, that's a good one. Okay, yeah. the other option is yeah, sit in the choir loft. And you will know mm -hmm. who comes to the early and who's gone. Yeah, <laughs> sing in the choir and go to both services. Yeah, yeah. yeah you could go to both services. <laughs> if, if you really care. <laughs> it's funny. Okay, so so Cindy, I want to do yeah. some more on this. So that was a great question, by the way. Let's get the prat, prat, brass tacks here. Now, the, the cool thing is that the Holy Spirit and the Spirit's wisdom has helped us see the little ones or the lost in two different ways. In the Gospel of Matthew, and this is chapter 18, Matthew 18, 10, the lost sheep is told in the context of what do you do if you've offended a brother or sister? Well, you go talk to them. 
-hmm. And then if that doesn't work, then you bring in a, another brother or sister to try and help you resolve. And then maybe you bring in the whole, you know, if, if there's this big conflict. So there's a way to resolve issues. This, this is the context of chapter 18. So who is the lost sheep in chapter 18? It's people who are been a part of the community who have left, who have, who have. And so what does the lost sheep parable say? Go get them. They're in fact, just as important, more important than the ones who are sticking around. No, so, so if we ever needed motivation to make that phone call or make that visit and listen, and by the way, when you talk, I should give you even some more information. When you call someone, this is training that I used to do for my inactive team, but I'll give you a little, little hint of it. There's two kinds of people. There's skunks and there's turtles. What's the first one? Skunks. 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 <laughs> so when you call up a skunk who hasn't been here in a while, you're likely to get this. That's great. I'm tired of the music. It's too long. The church is too long. The pastor goes on and on and on. The pastor never saw me. The pastor never thought about me. Um, and I don't like the fact that the church is blah, blah. You're going to get spring. That's what skunks do, right? They spray. Yes. You don't have to be defensive. You don't have to defend Pastor Bill or Jonathan or Justin with the music. You say, oh, wow, I'm sorry. And tell me more about that. And listen and listen, listen. After you do that for a half hour on the phone and they've just sprayed, then you say, what else is going on in your life? How, how are you doing? Oh, I just lost my job. All right. Yes. Okay, there's your answer. There. there you go. But see, when skunks are hurting, they spray. And what happens, and this is as hard as for me because I'm right in the crosshair sometimes, yeah. is we get defensive and then we get in a argument about mm -hmm. the music's great what are you talking about or you know <laughs> whatever complaint it is but you just want to listen and keep listening and then ask that question well what else is going on how's your family what else you know and oh well i just i got a diagnosis that you know because see they didn't have sorry now that's a skunk skunks actually are easier because they're just out there you call a turtle Boy, we've missed you. How you doing? What's, you know, I'm fine. Is there any problems? No, everything's good. Silence. Just hiding in their shell. <laughs> hiding in their shell. That's what mm -hmm. turtles do. They go. So, That's so, yes. Right. <laughs> I, I do this with every premarital council that I do. I, every, almost every marriage one person is more skunky and one person is more turtle it's skunk. Yeah, a skunk i'm the skunk sandy's the turtle so it's one of the most amazing and i applied it to marriage but i first heard about it in and then how do you reach out to inactive members but it it just has been proved to be so true um and you know so so that's my quick little training when you call people. So with it, when it, with a turtle, you want to be very patient and not be pushy, but um, you know it, it's hard to you know to you know to get them going, to get them to come out, you know. So I sometimes am pretty upfront after listening for a while. It's like, well, did anything happen? I really want you to know you can tell me, <laughs> or is there any issues or? You know, um, and that they're harder because they they want to feel safe. And if you don't know them, that's the plus with you where you say, like, I know them. I know these people. I haven't seen them. There's a relationship there. See, so they might they might actually share with you what's going on. Um, it also could just be that they've gotten out of the habit of church mm -hmm. and all they need is somebody to say, you know, we care about you. And, you know, we you know, you're missed. Um, and that's, that's my, my challenge. So if you were to go now, that's the gospel of Matthew, but that's not, that's not the gospel of Luke. Oh. If you were to go to Luke, let's see here. Um, and Luke, it's going to be in uh, Luke 15, one through seven. Look at the different contexts of the parable. 
This is this is a classic one, um, and I know I've done this before. So Kim and some others probably are like, yeah, I've heard this a million times. <laughs> um, but in Luke chapter 15, the context is what? Now the tax collectors and sinners were drawing near to him, and the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, this man receives sinners and eats with them. Okay, so that's the, in Matthew, it's how do we reach those who were part of the community that have wandered off? In Luke, it's the tax collectors and sinners who are coming to Jesus. Who are those? Are those the Jewish people or are they the Gentiles? They're the Gentiles. And so now he tells the parable. And note, having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, so in Luke, the sheep is lost. Guess what? In Matthew, the sheep went astray. If you let's go back. If you go back to Matthew, um, uh, let's see. For man, a hundred sheep, and one of them has what? Right there, gone astray. You see how see how each evangelist takes Jesus's parable and applies it. And Luke is the gospel for the Gentiles. Matthew is a very Jewish gospel, you know, it's a very, so you can see how each one has just shaped it, inspired by the Holy Spirit, and maybe Jesus told the parable in lots of different ways, and you know, whatever, I'm sure he told the story many times with a few differences, so that's what's really cool, um, so Cindy, you got me going on that when you said, who are the little ones, who are the little ones, well, yeah, in Luke, the little ones are the lost, the Gentiles, the tax collectors, the sinners. In Matthew, it's the ones who are vulnerable in the community that went astray, got lost, got disenfranchised, alienated. You know, the pastor, you know, stepped on their toes or I don't know, you know, um, said something stupid or, you know, um, or forgot something or, you know, I've had members I knew you know, it's just like I knew something bad happened, but it fell off my mental radar and I didn't follow up. And, you know, some of them just said, we're at it. You know, they get upset and off they go. Well, it's hard, for, hard to reach out, but we're called to do that. So, yeah. The Pharisees, too. I mean, in the sense that they've gone off the track. Absolutely. Yes. And that's the lost sheep of the House of Israel, especially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Are those the people that went decided to go to a different church? Because <laughs> it because the one ours isn't good enough for them. Yeah. The Pharisees, you know, it could be. It way. could be. Yeah. No. Uh, down yeah. the street. <laughs> that happens. Some, to you. Yeah. Sometimes you're called to a new place. I really believe that. I sometimes, um, you know, in my early ministry, I used to get so crushed. I still, it's hard when somebody leaves to go and you know we just received a couple from pbf and we've 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 shared a couple a number of people over there and shared a lot with new life and you know all of this but i used to get really upset and anymore i'm like you know if somebody leaves because they had a conflict that they didn't get resolved that's one thing you really should try and get that resolved but sometimes you're not getting nurtured you're not hearing the word and God calls you to a new but, place. I've, um, I've seen that happen over and over. Don't you think that if you get more nurtured, if you join up and join different clubs? Sure, like, what you I mean, put into it, you get out of it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. there's a lot of truth to that, Karen. Yeah. But yeah, sometimes, you know, you just need a new place and God mm -hmm. leads you to a new place and it's a good thing. So, and I've sent many people off with great blessings, you know, um, so, yeah. Are you sad when everyone left? <laughs> when everyone left? <laughs> Every single person you, I, I, were you ever glad to see some? Oh, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> I, uh, I declined to answer <laughs> on the grounds of the Fifth Amendment. <laughs> that could have happened, Ross, a few times. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely that's funny how you doing over there kim good i have one other thought about how he called the disciples little ones this is he's preparing them for the first time to go out they haven't done this before so they're like little baby baby disciples or baby apostles and um 
you know, ouch, my cat is abusing me. Um, I think that we can uh, feel like we can't uh, share our faith because we're unprepared or we don't have enough of it or, um, you know, we're not qualified, we're not a pastor, whatever the feeling might be. But if we think of ourselves as little ones in the same way, you know, uh, we're just baby disciples too, really. Love it. And that's, and that's kind of the way you feel like when you have, have that risk of making that phone call and talking to a turtle or a skunk. <laughs> Um, you know, and you it, don't know it when you call what it's going to be. Oh, well, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, yeah. And yeah, you do grow. Like, I feel a lot more confident talking to with people now because of the last 10 years of instruction that I've had. You know, I mean, it. you grow into it, but um, I still don't have complete confidence. You know, I still, but I have confidence in the Holy Spirit and I have confidence that, um, you know, the word is what's doing the work. And so, uh, you know, that helps a lot. Yeah. Well, I was thinking too, uh, another whole thing going on is uh, the pandemic. And like in our case, we couldn't get to church. Sure. We couldn't, we couldn't do yeah. it even after the quit. And you kind of begin to get into the habit of online. Right. And because all of a sudden it's hard to get out of those old systems. Yeah. And wean yourself off of that and get back into the stream. <clears throat> and that's <clears throat> the one thing that, that comes back to me a lot is um, online worship is no way as powerful as being in the sanctuary and being in, in right with the congregation yeah. and having the actual communion. But uh, sometimes you do what you can. Yeah, oh, yeah. I wish I could just, I wish I, well, I have recorded what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to play that for the congregation. Yeah. Yeah. The priest over downtown just, just cut out all online for a while. Said, get, get yourselves back here. <laughs> you know? I thought about it. Yeah. I really have. I'm, I look at our church and I see so many awesome things going and I'm so exciting. And then I look at the bottom line when it comes to worship attendance, and we're 100 to 125 less per Sunday still. And I just, I don't know what to do about that. I don't know if I should do like the Catholic priest did and say, we're not doing live stream for yeah. three months. Um, I think that would be a good idea. And, uh, but then we're going to restart it because... And, but you know what? It's almost uncanny. Every time I get about to that point, somebody tells me how when they were in the hospital, that live stream saved their That's life. True. And, you know, and you're, you're, you can testify to that, Sharon. And, or, you know, I watched it with my mom who can't come to church anymore. And I, you know, did this and, you know, so it's serving such a really good purpose. But I do worry it's enabling some people to just stay you know, maybe the turtles who like to stay in their shell and just watch from home, that it's enabling them to not engage in community. And I, I'm really worried about it. I mean, you know, I've, I've said this a number of times. If I, you know, if we dropped all of a sudden 125 in worship a Sunday, you know, before the pandemic, I'd have been like, all stop. You know, what's going on? Mm -hmm. We're not doing another thing until we figure out what's going on. Do we need new leadership? Do we need what? You know, it would have been like, but we trickled down now we trickled, and we're still there. So I don't know how to read it. You know, I don't know what what to do about that. So anyway, sorry, you yeah. you brought up something that's been on. Are, the, are there any identifying features to, you know, you can see how many people are watching. Can you identify who they are uh, if they don't? Um, like like it or there's no way that I know of to do that yeah, yeah. It, with our current you know um, technology and services that we use sometimes even the the, uh, the uh, what was it the bar like not a barcode or the, the yeah the QR code yeah the QR code 
by the time I drag out my phone and get it, it's gone. Yeah. So it's, it's yeah. We've tried to leave it on for longer, and of course you can just press pause. And yeah. Take it, but but um, and yeah. So Teresa, I think was going to now Facebook. I think you can see who's watching at the time. Mm -hmm. But what, what were you going to say? Sorry. I was just wondering if you can see. I haven't looked. If you can see where they're watching from, because like, I know from? Brian's cousins. They came to visit one time and loved our church. Yeah. And they watch from Michigan every week. They watch yeah. from Michigan every week. So there's <laughs> yeah, yeah. there's another reason why we need to keep <laughs> yeah, doing. Yeah. It, you know? But yeah. But I wonder how many are local that we can. Yeah. Yeah, that that would be an interesting yeah. question, Teresa, mm -hmm. to see if we can. YouTube, I think, has that metric. I think, I think when you go in, time. if you went to one of our events, you could go in and and you can see how long the average time of watching is, which that humbles you too. You know, mm -hmm. we might have 150 people who watch YouTube or the app or Facebook, but you don't know if they turned it on for 10 minutes or. You know, Facebook we do because Facebook has just if somebody clicks on it, it it lists it. But then it has something called engagements, which is you got to watch longer. And you know, so you might have we might on our face on our Facebook on a Sunday we might have two hundred clicks on Facebook, but only fifteen engagements mm -hmm. because only fifteen people really stuck with it, you know, um, type of thing. So, but we don't, we just don't know that much about the online stuff. So that's a great question, Kim. And maybe we can at least in Facebook, or I don't know about the app. That's something we have to ask Kathleen and Bruce about. Yes. If we can see if it'll give us, you know, where they're, you know, <laughs> are they local or are they from other things? But yeah. Well, sorry if I diverted us there a little bit, but no, Sharon, I, I think that's so true that, um, you know, be, being here, it's nothing like it. You know, it's not it's not the same as being at home, but at home, it's still good if that's all you can do. So, I mean, the families there, that's the other thing is our, you know, again, we've been talking a lot about this lately. Uh, you know, all of our young, it's, everybody's been saying how old we look, you know, <laughs> online. I'm like, yeah, it's true. You're two pastors, even your youth pastor is like, you know, gray hair. And all that. So we, maybe he should blend his hair. Again. Yeah, maybe I should get, some, maybe I should get some Grecian, yeah. get some Grecian, you know, so we can attract the younger crowd. Um, but, uh, no, part of it's like our younger family, we got lots of them. They just yeah. don't ever come. Not very often, or they come once a month or once every six weeks. That's you know, strange. it's and you know why? It's most of the time volleyball, yes. soccer, mm -hmm. baseball. Mm -hmm. It's all on Sunday. There's and you know, so families have a tough choice. I mean, uh, I was just talking to uh, Amanda and Horacio yesterday. Some of you, Amanda's a pastor in the ELCA, she's down at Eagle. Where is she at? She's down by Mount Rainier. Um, she was a former intern here. Many of some of you probably remember when she was an intern before I got here. But um, she's married to a Guatemalan man who's also a Lutheran pastor, and there he now also has a call to the church that they're serving. Anyway, and they just said we. They told their kids, "Sorry, you're not playing club. Sorry, you're not playing club soccer, or whatever, because." And of course, they're pastors, so they can't go to soccer games on Sunday morning. But, 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 it, but I think they would do that anyway. Well, that's a tough sacrifice. But this is what families are facing, you know. And then, is your kid going to be resentful and mad that you know because they? Have, it's just a pickle. It's just a pickle. So, but anyway, all right. Well, come on to church because when you receive the word and you hear it, you're receiving Jesus. Um, that also gives me big instruction as a preacher. What's my job? Uh, we're going to sing, I think, it, is it? No, it's in a couple of weeks. Give me Jesus, you know, that spiritual. I love that song. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what yeah. I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to give you Jesus. If I didn't do, if I don't do that from the pulpit, I, I miss the boat. Mm -hmm. Even if I have to give you some law, I got to give you Jesus. That's that's why I'm here. So when you hear, you're receiving. I, get, I think that's the question. Like we think about hospitality 
you know, like, come on over, let me help you out. Actually, the way you show hospitality in this sense is to listen, you know. Um, if we went, you guys, who can, who can, uh, who can recount their small catechism, third commandment, before I put it up here, there it is. No, that's the second commandment. So what, what does the third commandment say? What's the third commandment? Remember? Sabbath day to keep it holy. Okay, and what does it mean? We are to fear and love God so that we do not despise preaching for God's word, but instead keep that word holy and gladly hear and learn it. There it we is. need to put that on the front of the <laughs> church. On the front of the on church. church. Oh. Well, there it is, right Here's there. Here's a place to gladly hear and learn about it. That, there it is. And, yeah. Now, again, yeah. going back to not to be the, you know, <laughs> keep, what does the devil want to do? Keep you from doing that. And why does we need a commandment to tell us that? Because we've got an old nature that wants to do our own thing. And we need this commandment to say, look, you, you know, you're to fear and love God. So do not despise the preaching of God's word. Yeah. Well, at the age I am, I can yeah. go back and think, I think I can actually picture when suddenly the stores open. Yes. Yes. You know, yes. and they had blue laws, just neighbor state, Pennsylvania. Yes. And that what they didn't get rid of those for a long time. Yeah. So the whole society was geared toward church on Sunday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And hearing God's word. Hearing the word. And it was easier because nothing else happened. Mm -hmm. In this sense, the, right. you know, and sure. so we had a culture that was friendly mm -hmm. to the church mm -hmm. in that regard. That Sunday was worship church. Mm -hmm. That That's right. we you you couldn't get your gas tank filled. Mm -hmm. You couldn't go to the grocery store. No. You couldn't do all those errands that we want to do. So it was set. Mm -hmm. Of course, that was more in the time of single incomes, and it, yeah. So everything's changed. Yeah, it changed. But right. and but we've given a little and they've taken a mile yeah that's right because i i'm not legalistic about the sabbath like that's my problem with the blue laws is like sometimes you have to do something on sunday do it you know it's not god isn't gonna you know i my I, one of our members has a very very devout catholic um brother you know and like they go duck hunting or he stops and he has to go find a catholic church yeah. <laughs> because I cannot miss, or I'm like committing this horrible sin. Well, to me, that's like over too much. Exactly. But we've given a little, and now we have no time. Right. When is there a spot? And our, but that's the thing. Even though half the country is still supposedly Christian, you know, which is scary because that's way down. Mm -hmm. But if you were to start, if you were to go to Europe and say half the country is Christian, no. And, you know, 10% or 5% of those countries are Christian, you know, so we take it, you know, but even at half the country, although it's different in different parts of the country, obviously, um, there's not uh, a support in our culture for what we're doing anymore. And maybe that's good because that's a real challenge in discipleship. But yeah, so Sharon, when you bring that up, you know, we think about the farmers who wouldn't do their crops on Sunday, you know, when the when the hailstorm was coming and, you know, I'd be like, go out and harvest your crops, dude. But I see <laughs> I see the other side of it, though, is like, where do you stop then? You know, <laughs> pretty soon you've now you've let go of that. So there is something where the old Adam needs to say this is it. You know, nothing else intrudes. And and so we we're down the road a long ways from those those days and so it's but the cool thing is it's more of a challenge to do it you know you think of the early christians they didn't have a they didn't have a culture that was saying oh good you're going to church you know <laughs> yeah. no so so that's but you know for us it doesn't matter whether it's sunday it could be today that's what you're doing now you're hearing god's word you know it could be thursday night it could be but do you have a time for us what the the sacred day is about is hearing god's word um so yeah i read a, a, an article that said the percentage of deaf people who 
kind of thing because there is gone. Oh, really? Because they don't hear. They don't hear. Oh, no. The percentage of people have who are deaf who cannot hear is very low. A percentage of people that come to faith. That is interesting. Because, you know, you can hear with sign language. Mm -hmm. You just don't hear the sound. But that's interesting. Yeah. Do we have anybody in congregation that does sign? I think we might. But, you know, that would be well, cool. Wouldn't that be cool if somebody... Know, they yeah. could stand up during the sermon, especially, and have it go online. I've seen churches that really have this down that would have a little box. They wouldn't have the person standing up by sometimes. I've seen synod assemblies and I've seen conventions and other right. things where there's someone doing sign, mm -hmm. you know, behind the person speaking. Yeah, we could right. certainly have that, which would be cool. Um, that'd be a great outreach because we could say, hey, if you're hearing impaired and, you know, sign that you're going to be you're going to get to hear the word here today um i've seen other churches have somebody in the background doing it mm -hmm. you know and they put it up on the live stream or something mm -hmm. or up on the screen yeah you know so yeah you have no they, idea what they're saying yeah it's true you have to trust they're translating it right <laughs> i'm going to trust them ross that's got to be an amazing skill to be listen a, and oh yeah that's amazing. But I don't know that we have someone that knows it that well. We'd have to maybe employ someone, which again, we could we could look into that. I'm sure there's somebody that's that does that that's looking for a job, you know. So that's an interesting thought. Yeah. Yeah. May I mention something? Please. The Navy families understand the chapel out at the at Bangor is pretty much gone. It is. And uh, yeah, and you know. Having been through that experience with three young kids and even directing a choir on bass and that kind of, um, there's an outreach to to the Navy and the people who who do live locally could be very important. And Jessica seems to be really on top of that. Sure, try. And Absolutely. Uh, that's that's a tough one because it's hard to get the kids up in the morning and get them out, and there's no dad there. Yeah, but um, we are or maybe talking to even getting the word out to the dads to encourage the yeah. families to yeah. go. Yeah, we are sure trying. Yeah, that, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty hard. But. Yeah. Oh, again, even in the military, you're losing that support. Yeah, uh, Kim, and then. Uh, yeah, you know, I was thinking about that third commandment and um, having a having the word and keeping it holy, and I think that that's something that we've always needed to have a word to keep holy. And with all of the different options that we have now from what we had, you know, 50 years ago when more things were closed, we're just finding different words to keep holy. You know, we're finding uh, it's it, it's like, um, you know, our heart is our heart longs for something. And so we're going to fill it with whatever word. And it might be the YouTube rabbit hole or it could be meditation, you know, self-help or uh, going to the mountains or whatever, but we're all going to keep a word holy. Yeah, that's true. That, you know, that's true. It takes away your day of rest. But... Yes. Yeah. And the need for rest yeah. is, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, you guys are awesome. We've got, to, I've got to finish at 10 till today. So we've got about 10 minutes. Um, should we take on a little bit of Romans, the supporting text from Romans? So I believe we're 12 through 23. Let's see. Um, chapter six. So, so along with the gospel reading from Matthew, we're walking through Romans right now. So I'm thinking I'm preaching on the ninth, and I think I'm going to, it's hard because it's the text about come all ye who labor from Matthew, and I'll give you rest. Um, I'm thinking, though, that I'm going to really focus on the Romans just because we've, you know, been reading through Romans. So I feel like I, I want to kind of collect where we've been. So let's let um, anybody want to read 12 through oh, evidently all the way to 23. Yeah. 
Who who's who's talking here? Paul is talking to the Romans. Yeah. To the Roman people. People. To so okay. the Roman church. The Roman the, church. The churches in Rome or the church in Rome. We don't know how many there were, and, but it's likely that there were multiple house churches oh, okay. under one banner, I guess you could say. And some King James. Shall we do a little King James? I can handle it. Love yeah. it. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that ye should obey it in the in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as, is, as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom we yield yourselves, know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye <laughs> obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God, he thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was, which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanliness and to iniquity into iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now me, being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit in, unto holiness, and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Does it say free gift or just the gift? Um, the gift. Yeah, okay. It's probably one, yeah, it's just one word. Yeah. All right. So, <clears throat> real quickly here in Romans, we've got uh, Paul's working through uh, back in the beginning of chapter six. You've been baptized, you've died with Christ, you're, now you're going to have a new life. But the question that sets all of this up is, what then shall we say? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can you have died to sin still live in it? In other words, so he's confronting the age-old complaint of Lutheran theology. <laughs> he's confronting, you guys believe in grace, and the more sin there is, the more grace there is. So why don't I just keep sinning? Because God... You know, God likes to forgive sin. I like to commit them. So it's a nice arrangement, you know. <laughs> you know, so should I just keep going? In other words, something that Dietrich Bonhoeffer, you know, coined as cheap grace. Um, I, I actually have come to disagree humbly with the great Dietrich Bonhoeffer on that. I don't think grace is grace, whether we cheapen it or not. I mean, it's, it's you don't ever earn grace. You know, it was costly. But whether or not I treat it that way or not is, but again, we could go in and read Dietrich on that in his Cost of Discipleship book. But the way Paul deals with it, note that the way he deals with it is um, that now we have a choice of wh who do we present our members to. Do we present our members to sin or do we present our members to righteousness, to, to Christ? Um, and so it makes no sense now that, you know, one part of us has died for us to present ourselves and do that. We're not, we're not enslaved to sin anymore. And yet what? Yes, we are. <laughs> this is where we got to then move on next week to Romans 7, when Paul is going to say um, that uh, the very thing I want to do, I don't do. And the thing I don't want to do, I do. And so I feel behind the wheel most days. Um, <laughs> um, but uh, so, the, but the truth is that we are free. Sin has no dominion over you since you are not under law, but under grace. So what are we, what is Paul saying? See, here's the thing. Um, if you're under the law, the dominion of the law, sin, um, 
has got you because you don't keep it. So it's fascinating to me if we went to if we went also to First Corinthians uh, fifteen towards the end of the chapter. I've always been fascinated by this. At the very end of the chapter, um, after Paul's talking about the resurrection, he says the sting of the sting of death is sin. So the stinger of death, like a like you've been like a bee sting, like the sting of death is sin. Why is death sting? Because sin. But where does sin get the power to do that? The power of sin is what? The law. Those beautiful, wonderful Ten Commandments. But thanks to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ? So the law is a problem, even though it is a great gift. Um, for sin, okay, now go to verse 14 of Romans 6, back to Romans. For sin will have no dominion over you since you are not under law, but under grace. Christ died for our sins. What does that mean? That he took all of our sin upon himself and also the condemnation of the law. He became under the law for us. He put himself under the law. He who knew no sin became sin, Paul says. He actually became sin. He didn't just represent sin. He didn't just by, you know, give you an analogy. No, he actually became our sin on the cross. And so the law and its accusation, its power, you know, got poured out on Jesus. All of our unkeeping of the law, he took it. So now we are not under the law anymore. We're under grace. We are set free from that bondage. So what do we do? Well, we don't go on sinning now. Yahoo! Um, uh, this, you know, there's verse 15. Um, no, you, so now we are free from, from sin and death. So now we can, we want to nurture the new part of us. We want to submit ourselves as slaves of righteousness. Um, and, and that's what we want to do. We want to go back to our baptism and remember we've died with Christ and, and we want to do just what you're doing. Present yourself as slaves to righteousness, which leads to sanctification. Because, you know, so you were slave to sins. Now you're free. You were free. and But now the fruit, this is really important. Verse 21. But what fruit were you getting at the time of things of which you're now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. So the fruit of being a slave to sin is death. Because you're, you know, all that stuff you did, it just leads to death. But now you've been set free from sin. You've become slaves of God. Um, so now we have a new master. But you, you get to verse 20. So the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Wouldn't you want to just stop there? Like, yay, we're free from sin. But if he did, I'd be sitting here going, Boy, that old Adam sure gets the best of me a lot of days. Maybe I've missed the boat because I'm free from sin. I'm I'm not I'm a slave, I'm under grace, not law anymore. But how come I still keep messing up? Well, that's because we have two U's. And that's where we'll go into next week. We've got another law at work in ourselves and that's what Romans 7 says and this is where Lutherans get the classic saint and sinner that we are two things at the same time simoustus epicotter same time saint same time sinner mm -hmm. it's right here Romans 6 and Romans 7 so all right that's we gotta we gotta close it up so that you will get will that's just a precursor to next week next week's Bible study. <laughs> Let me, Kim, bless you. Hope you're doing well. Thank you for being with us today. Let me stop. Oh, let's see. I have to go exit and get my stop share here. All right.
Um, close in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we give thanks for this study today, and we pray that it'll be, it'll bear fruit. We give thanks that um, we, as we hear your word and receive you, you set us free from the law and sin and death, and um, that we have that new reality in our life, even while the old Adam and the old Eve still plagues and nips at our heels. We know that that's only for a time until we are with you and um, raised with Christ and the mortal puts on immortality. So we pray for all the things we've talked about and we pray that they'll bear fruit and we certainly pray for all the lost sheep and for all the sheep that went astray and that we can be uh, apostles and good news tellers and good and and good listeners. Um, so bless the food too that we're going to receive at Hearty Meal and just let this this Bible study be food and for our faith. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank Thanks you. everybody. Thank you.